Hi, everyone. I got an interesting email about a week ago from a gentleman I'm friends with, uh, and he asked this question, uh, and I'm going to read it because I realize not all of you are staring at your phone right now. Um, hey, Josh, hope everything's going well. I've got a question maybe you can help me out with. Uh, how, do model, how do developers model multi-phase developments? For example, if a hypothetical company blacked out for legal reasons were to buy a piece of land and develop it into multiple buildings, uh, how would you value the land over time? Is the land cost baked into the first building? Would it make that make the first one look horrible? Uh, how would you allocate the land cost, et cetera? Uh, what about carrying costs? How do you do this? So here's the short version to the question. And I think it's a pretty simple answer once you see it demonstrated. Let's say you had four deals and each of them where you put in 400, you get out 700. And to start with, let's pretend the land is free. In that case, each deal was wildly successful. Okay, that part's pretty simple. Each deal makes 75%. Now let's say, by buying the land and getting it ready, would cost you 500. If you bought the land and got it ready for development for 500, and then you sold it to yourself for 500, instead of this being negative four and seven, like it was up here, it becomes negative nine and seven. You're basically selling it to yourself. This is po positive 500. This adds a negative 500, you get the idea. In that case, these are still wildly positive, a is a fail, it loses money, and land breaks even. That's distorted. That's weird. A better way to do it would be to say, buy the land for 500, cut it up into four parcels, each 125. This still nets out to 500, nets out to zero, I mean, because five in, five out. The land breaks even, and now we've allocated the land costs over the four assets. So each of these goes from negative four to negative 5.25, negative 525, negative 525. And now instead of, as we had up here, zero, negative 20, positive 70, it becomes zero, positive 30. Now that's a better way of showing it. However, you really shouldn't be buying land and selling it for the same amount. I mean, if you're buying land and making improvements to it and prepping it and getting it ready for development, you've created value. So you've got to ask yourself, if I put in 500 and I've created value, what is that land worth on the open market if I did not sell it to myself, if I just sold it to other people? Maybe putting in 500 has created 600 in value divided four ways, it's 150. In that case, the land development portion is profitable. You sell it to yourself at a small profit to the land. You show eight here, you show 27 here, instead of zero and 33. Now, why do we do this? We do this because sometimes you buy the land and you sell it to yourself for profit. Sometimes you buy the land you get it ready for development, you sell it to yourself, the first deal works, and then maybe you can't build buildings B, C, and D. Maybe something goes horribly wrong and you bleed money and you bleed money and you're paying property taxes and then eventually you sell it for roughly what you put into it because if you bought it for 500 and you sold it to yourself for 150 and sold it to someone else for 350, the land development portion now lost money, and the building A, well, that's still just as profitable. Or to put it simply, we should be creating value at every stage of the conversation. We should be creating value when we buy land and cut it up and sell it, whether to ourselves or to other parties, and we should also be creating value when we develop each parcel. Um, and that's the way I'd look at it. And so then to the other part of these questions, what about from a debt perspective? What about carrying costs? As you can see, the carrying costs are in here. Maybe if you did do building B, maybe you shouldn't sell it to yourself for 150. Maybe it's a different price, you know, but that's carrying costs usually be carried in the land. From a debt perspective, 
you know, each portion would have had its own debt. I mean, if you borrowed money against the land, as you sold portions to yourself, you'd be paying off that loan. Uh, and for each building, if each building has its own construction loan, it'll have its own construction loan. In other words, keep the debt for the land portion in the land portion and keep the debt for buildings A, B, and C, and D in buildings A, B, C, and D. That's how I'd handle it. So hopefully this brief explanation with a little video and some simple numbers has answered Jack's questions, who emailed me, uh, this gentleman by the name of Jack. Um, great. Hopefully you found that interesting and useful. Uh, if you have other questions of a similar fashion, feel free to email me at josh at carrealestate.com, spelled out there, or go to my website for similar information. And if you have other kind of tricky problems you feel like sending me an email for and you need a quick, uh, quick explanation, uh, maybe I'll make it into a video. So there you go, Josh at Car Real Estate, carrealestate.com. Thank you for your time, and until I see you again, keep building better models.